Welcome back to another episode of Heart to Art featuring various artists and creators from different backgrounds. I am Simone Aguse, your host, and today's guest is Miss Akila. Hello. Welcome. We're so excited to have you. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. So please tell the audience a little bit about yourself. Okay, my name is Akila. On my Instagram, I go by Akila the Beauty. I am a makeup artist in the DMV area. Um, I am originally from Brooklyn, New York, but I was pretty much raised in Fiji County and I do makeup. I've been doing makeup for the past five years professionally and I do all, type, all kinds of makeup. Weddings, proms, um, working with a lot of influencers lately for their brand shoots, anything that's needed requiring a brush, I'm there. Awesome. Well, we're super excited to get into the details and the passion and the heart in your art. So, the first question is, what kind of drove you to become a makeup artist? Um, I would say that my journey started at the very tender age of eight. <laughs> no, it was actually fashion first. Fashion was my first love. Um, I went to school for journalism and then I did an internship at Team Vogue in New York. And I was in it. I was like the fashion girl. Then out of that internship, right, to learn an experience, so I learned that I don't really want to be in the fashion mm -hmm. industry the way I thought I wanted to be. Um, and I came back home, went to school, started working, living life, and having a family was always important to me. So went into that as far as living a family, having a family, but I always had a passion for fashion, mm -hmm. and fashion goes hand in hand with beauty. So since I wasn't in the fashion industry, I still had that itch. I was like, well, I'm still gonna try to be fly. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm still gonna try to keep myself up. And I started to get into makeup mm -hmm. really hard from watching YouTubers and just watching how the beauty game changed. And I was like, oh, this is it. Like, it challenges me, it's fun, and I'm constantly learning. Nice. So, Basically, it kind of just evolved into becoming a makeup artist. Yeah, it evolved, exactly. I mean, I always probably was interested in it, but makeup wasn't really that popular back in my high school or mm -hmm. college days. It was more so the no makeup look, like wear makeup, mm -hmm. but don't really let anybody know you're wearing makeup. Mm -hmm. um, and then when it became so glorified, really, um, I jumped on the bandwagon and started to teach myself. Nice. So what would you say, how would you describe your style of makeup? Is, do you have one particular style or like your go-to style or? So as a makeup artist, you cannot have one style. <laughs> um, hopefully you're versatile and you can go from natural to glam. Mm -hmm. You should be able to be strong in all of those styles of makeup. However, I prefer glam makeup. Mm -hmm. I love the glitter, I love the gold, I love the shimmer, I love the dewiness the contour, like I love glam makeup and I'm a glam girl, so that's what I prefer. Mm -hmm. But I could do any kind of makeup and I think you should really focus on learning each type of skill to do each type because that's what you that's what you have to do to make a part of it. Be versatile and kind of know the whole game. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So what's some of the tools that you use to try to teach yourself how to do makeup? Well, I would say that Practicing on yourself, obviously, is the number one thing that you have to do before you touch anybody else's face. You better learn how to perfect your face. Um, and then constantly watching videos, attending classes. I've attended a couple of classes at MAC. Uh, I'm not sure if MAC still has a they set program mm -hmm. where you can go and learn from the artists that are in-house and they would do a class on contouring and then they would do a class on highlighting, which is kind of like an incentive for their clients. So I did a couple of those, and then I'm constantly learning, literally through Instagram, mm -hmm. through YouTube, because trends in makeup are always changing. Mm -hmm. So it's a constant learning process. So at what point would you, or did you, consider yourself to be like a full-time professional makeup artist? I would say after, maybe it was fast, but after like a year of me doing mm -hmm. it professionally, because at first I was just charging people $50, it was like friends. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I'll do your makeup. Because I was so interested and passionate about it. And then literally my friends were like, you're really good at this. So you probably want to start charging a little more. Or like, so I paced myself from, from 50 to $65. And then from 65 to 75 You know, so I kept going as I kept acquiring more skill. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so that was pretty much uh, my journey at the beginning. 
So a lot of people find it hard to kind of jump into labeling themselves as a professional and going through that whole journey. Like in the beginning, was you still working like a nine to five job or when you decided to do makeup, did you just hang it up and was like, I'm doing this. And then a year later became professional. Like, So I was always working a nine to five and I was teaching myself makeup while I was working a nine to five. I didn't have any kids at the time. So I had more free time to practice on myself. Um, and also to take more clients on the side when I wasn't working. So no, I, I do not recommend jumping in head first, especially with makeup. So in this in this area, makeup artists are heavily saturated. There's a lot of great artists out there. There's a lot of okay artists as well, mm -hmm. but it's, it's basically a heavily saturated market for makeup artists. And then new makeup artists are popping up every day. Now, not all makeup artists are made the same, so I do recommend you really focus on yourself, focusing on yourself to stand out but at the end of the day, unless you aren't doing five clients a day, mm -hmm. you're not going to be making what you were making in a nine to five. Mm -hmm. So when I made the decision to um, go full time with makeup, I did realize or recognize that, look, the salary that I'm going to be making from makeup is not going to be the exact salary that I was working in the, during my nine to five. Mm -hmm. So with makeup, I'm still going to have to do something to supplement it. Mm -hmm. And, but I accepted that because I wanted more time with my kids and I mm -hmm. wanted to be home. So I guess what I would say is unless you are replacing the full income mm -hmm. <laughs> of what you are making, if, if that is the decision that you are willing to make knowing that you're not going to be making that exact in income at first, mm -hmm. then yeah, go for it. But if you know that you need that, then I wouldn't say jump in. I would say continue to do it on the side, continue to do it part time. Do not derail your life and stability mm -hmm. on a whim. Yeah. So yeah. basically, once you kind of stabilize yourself, then you would say, like, you can pursue it full time. Exactly. Because I, I think I did it professionally for a good four years before I actually left my job. Oh, really? Four years? Yeah, I did it for a good four years on the side. And then I left my job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. About the fifth year. So when you was talking, you mentioned that you kind of have to stand out as a makeup artist. Like, what are some things that you do or that you have done to stand out as a makeup artist versus an, an advice that you would give to somebody else? Well, I think through my Instagram, people uh, get inspiration. So I'm not only a makeup artist, like I said, my background is fashion. So marrying the two is exciting. Mm -hmm. People want to see, oh, she could do makeup, oh, but she can do fashion too. Then you marry the two together, and it's like, wow, it's impressive. So I think through my Instagram, people see that. Like, even on my Instagram, I'm not necessarily posting clients on my feed, mm -hmm. but my clients are posted on my stories, mm -hmm. they're in my highlights, and I literally get jobs off of that. Mm -hmm. Because as you know, stories is the most viewed thing on mm -hmm. Instagram, and it's going to continue in that trend going upward. So constantly posting it on my stories, constantly um, posting makeup and fashion on my feed, I think that kind of, that I know that it does, it generates business. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what, what makes me stand out. But then also, I think your pre presentation is key. So, and your consistency. So what I mean by that is, if you are on social media, that is not the only platform that you want to be on, obviously. Mm -hmm. So, for example, I have a Google business page. I'm on the Thumbtack app. I'm on Yelp. So, if you spread your reach mm -hmm. to these different platforms, keep each platform consistent, mm -hmm. then the follow-through is going to come in. Mm -hmm. And once people start seeing the numbers, like, oh, she has good reviews on Google, she has good reviews on Yelp and Thumbtack. I just actually got certified as a top-rated artist on Thumbtack, wow. which means that you're consistently That's being hired for for um, a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. So then they give you a badge, like wow. top-rated artist. That's really cool. Yeah, I, I was proud of that. I didn't even know that I got it until I got a notification on my email. But that consistency of posting on other platforms makes makes a difference as well. Mm -hmm. Because we mentioned with the Google page, you're a five-star rated makeup artist in this area. Yeah. So how how do you feel about that? And like, what do you feel contribute to that success? I am proud of it. Um, I've seen other artists, because it shows you your competition when you go on Google. Like, oh, this artist is in this area and she has three stars and she has mm -hmm. four stars. Mm -hmm. So the fact that I have all five stars 
pretty much from every single person who's left a review. It really makes me feel proud. But I also really listen to the feedback in those reviews. And the common thread, I was doing this yesterday, the common thread in my feedback is the way I made them feel. Mm -hmm. The conversations we had while she did my makeup, um, the confidence that I felt when the job was done. So I take that feedback and I say, oh, so that's my skill mm -hmm. to converse with women, to talk to them, to make them feel comfortable, to make them feel beautiful. And then obviously that coupled with makeup, mm -hmm. flawless mm -hmm. makeup, it's just like a trifecta. Oh, that's exciting. So what advice would you give to somebody else to kind of get their game up? I would say a couple of things. Well, one, like I mentioned, get yourself across multiple platforms. Um, make sure your presentation is good as far as your branding goes. You know, you may not feel as artistic as far as design and branding, but there's so many people out here who can help you. There's so many apps like Canva and Planoly and apps that can help you to, to do it for cheap or for free, mm -hmm. to do it for cheap or for free. So there's really no excuse with that. Um, so getting your platform straight. And then I will also say in working with your client, your client is your most valued asset. That is your money. So you better be treating them good. Like give mm -hmm. good customer service. Think about if you're receiving the service, mm -hmm. what would I want? What would I expect? You know, is the area clean that they're coming to? Is it a lot of noise? Is there kids running around? Is there, you know, I work out of my home. Mm -hmm. My studio is in my home and I have so many clients come to my house. It's clean. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the kids are not acting crazy, making noise. Like you want to have the proper business etiquette. I think that's very essential, very important. Stay consistent with that. And then the last thing I would say is network. So you network through your clients, mm -hmm. you network through emailing your clients. You know, building that email list is key. Having, if you have any incentives, if you have any things coming up where you're doing a sale or you're, you know, incentivize a gift for a client to give a gift to someone to get makeup done. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Think of different ways in, in which you can build your your business. But word of mouth is actually my strongest, I would say, word of mouth is the strongest thing that gets you business. Wow. So it, it, it goes back to your customer service. How do you make them feel? You may not be the best makeup artist, but if you're making that person feel beautiful and then, you know, the makeup is decent, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they're going to remember you. Yeah. Even if the makeup isn't decent, do you still find that with other artists they can still kind of keep that Yes, because I've seen it. Wow. <laughs> I've seen it. Just like I, I mentioned, not all artists are made the same. I mean, obviously, it's based on that. Makeup, fashion, all those things are based on your an individual person's interpretation of it. Mm -hmm. So the caliber or the standard of makeup that I may think is great may be completely different to another person and they may not think it's that great. Or they may think someone with, with less skills, oh, she's fine. I like the way she does my makeup. Mm -hmm. So it's individualized in that sense. And that's why no artist should be knocking another artist because everybody's journey is different. Everybody's style of makeup is different. Mm -hmm. um, but if your makeup is decent, and a person likes it, and they like your personality, yes, they may very well come back. Mm -hmm. Even if there was another great artist who's better, they're gonna come to you, because yeah, they, they like the conversation, they like the way you make them feel. Mm -hmm. So, and they, sometimes they just wanna support you. Mm -hmm. So, that makes sense. And I feel too, like with art, we have like such a responsibility to kind of provide that feeling to other people mm -hmm. through whatever kind of art that you do. So what would you say as far as like how beauty and makeup and fashion and all that kind of helps speak to one's mental health?